February 7th, 2018. Woo! Welcome to Dice Tower Tonight, a video cast about board games and card games, and especially the people who play them. On tonight's show, we'll play another round of board game Survivor with the help of the live audience. We'll play show and tell with a few recent games, maybe something else Tom's not telling me about, and then take your questions live. I'm Eric Summerer, and here's your host, the stone to my broom, Tom Vassell. The what? Oh, no. Yes. Yes. I'm okay, very excited. I'll give it to you because Winter Olympics is here. Yes. And I think the Winter Olympics are more exciting than the Summer Olympics. I, sure. Yes. Yeah. For very different reasons than Eric. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm, I'm super excited about the new mixed doubles curling. They've changed up some rules. There's going to be some crazy strategy decisions and stuff. They get, oh man, it's going to be great. Two person teams, five stones each, but they Bob have like sledding. a free setup. It's bobsledding is what we're and, interested in. And bobsledding. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to be changing things up all the time in here. Thank you for the 50 of those of you who are with us. You get to join us for our initial game. Woo! All right, so Eric was going to like one game and not like the other. So we'll start with the game Eric likes. Okay. Linky. Okay. So I got 200 new cards for Linky. So there's no way Eric has seen these cards yet. So Eric's going <laughs> to okay. play this game. And he has a 30 second delay advantage over the audience. But if it's so, it's you guys versus Eric. So if you can come up with these now, don't <laughs> cheat there. Don't be searching stuff for on the internet here. So the way Linky works is I'm going to give four. Um, I'm going to give four clues. So I will ask, I'll be like, um, what, what's a good clue for this? Uh, a, a good example one. Maybe if I said something to the effect of like, what, what is this? And Eric says, that's an orange shirt. And then I said, you know, what's this? And he's yellow. And he's answering these very obvious questions. And then he's looking for an overall thing that links them together. And he might say colors. Okay, that's very, very generic. They're much harder right. than that. Okay. So I'm going to start with a really difficult one. <laughs> I love this. So, okay, yes. So Eric's going to be answering the clues out loud. Oh. But you, he only wins if you get the... Uh, I'm not going to say yes or no to the clues anyway. Okay. He only wins if he gets the link um, that connects all these together. But all if right. you in the audience beat him... So you have the advantage because there is 90 of you right now, 91... <laughs> and only one of Eric. But so this Eric is one is versus smart. 100. Eric's super smart, and he has a 30-second delay advantage on you guys. It's because okay. you're watching this slightly after I have said it. Are you ready, Eric? I hope so, and, yes. And, and you can guess the link before all four clues if you, if you want to. Number one, if you think someone's trying to fool you, you might say, blank the other one. Uh, okay, fool the other one. I don't know. A PR guru, this is number two, a PR guru used by politicians is called a what doctor? Okay, that's a, that's a spin doctor. Number three, what type of knife has a blade that springs out from the side when a button is pressed? Switch blade, spin switch, spin spin. Are they washing machine settings? No, no. Um, uh... Spin switch. Spin switch. Spin switch. All right. Number four. Complete the famous hit song by the Beatles, What and Shout. Uh, tw twist? No. Are you kidding me? I'm going to look for a much easier one here while we're uh, doing this. Are, are they Bop It? It's it Bop It. You're right, it is Bop It, but Woo! you were beat by the audience by just a few seconds. Ah! It's pull oh. it, twist, spin it, flick it, twist ah. it. Hey, you know what's really interesting? I have an R2-D2 version of this, which I, of, it's the same thing. Yes, you're twisting R2-D2's oh, head, uh, the Bop It type thing. Okay. And I did pretty good. I got like 30. Um, two of my kids have scored 100 on it now, which apparently is the maximum thing. And one of them is Claire, who only has one arm, but she's managed to figure out how to do it. Wow. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. Let's all let's right. try um let's try this one here. Oh, that one's too easy. Okay. 
That's too easy also. Okay, here's an easy one, but I, I like this one. Okay. What is the name of the markets where people try to sell off all their old trash? Blank trunk sales. Actually, it says boot sales, but boot means trunk in England, and that's where this game comes from. Ah. Uh, I was going to say flea market, but uh, it's a, um, I don't know this one. All right. Complete. Well, okay. Well, th maybe this is an English thing then. I I'm going to give you the answer to that one because it's car trunk sales. Or, uh, people come and sell things out of the back of their cars. All right. Anyway, complete oh. the proverb and lyric from the Smith song. The blank finds work for idle horns to do. Idle hands to do. The devil finds. Number three, which large mammal can be white, black, Javan, or Sumatran? Sumatran? Yeah, that too, probably. White, black, Javan, or Sumatran? I don't right, know. We'll go, to, we'll go to clue number four. There are two animals on the royal co coat of arms, a lion and which other? This is the easy one you said? The royal coat of arms. Like, I yeah. pay attention to that. Um. <laughs> yeah, this is just going to be staring into the camera while I wait for the rest of the group. All right, well, it's a out. unicorn, okay? So I'm giving you these clues slowly because it's car, devil, rhino, that's the mammal, and unicorn. Car? Yeah. Uh, they're, they're car. No. Oh, you've been beaten by the audience. Vanessa Garretton says the link is horns. Oh. Okay. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Yeah, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. All right, we, sure. we, we can we we can do a better one here. This is going great. Um, you got no, you got one, and you almost beat the audience. It's going great. I mean, you didn't, but um, let's see here. Um, mm, all right, the Chinese dish made from duck, pancakes, and spring onion is called blank aromatic duck. Uh. King. Okay, no. Uh, number two, what wobbly substance is commonly used on sandwiches? Mayo. <laughs> number three, they're stiff. Okay, you know what? We're not going to do this one anymore. <laughs> All right. Let's. <laughs> I keep forgetting some of these, the clues. I, I I should read some of these ahead of time because they're very English, some of the clues. Uh -huh. and, and, you, and you just obviously can't do it. Okay, here's one. This is very American. Okay. What American actor was artistic director of the Old Vic in London for 11 years? Okay, how about this? He also starred in House of Cards. Kevin Spacey. Okay, good. Name the English actor famed for his commitment to method acting who starred in There Will Be Blood. Uh, that's, oh, uh, Daniel Day-Lewis. Who played the mad professor in the 1997 film Flubber and the undercover nanny in Mrs. Doubtfire? Robin Williams. Who played God in the film Bruce Almighty? That's Morgan Freeman. They've all played the president? That's correct! And you beat the internet! Oh! Hey, when did Rob Williams play the president? Uh, when did he play the president? He it was in this uh, movie, I forget the name of it now, where he was like a comedian. And it was almost like a joke that he ran for president, but he did. Hmm. And, and then he won through the election being rigged. It, it, it's, it's actually a pretty good movie. Okay. Okay. So that's the game Eric likes. Now, what's the game Eric does not like? He forgot that I still had this game. Do you remember, Eric? Oh, boy. It's... Slash. <laughs> Slash. Oh, no. All right. So here's what we're going to do. So Slash is we're writing our own romantic stories. And so I'm randomly selected some cards here. And I'm going to pick somebody 
from the the top of the cards. Actually, I, I semi randomly selected them. I I pulled some that I think were dumb and I just threw them out. So, Eric, give me a number from one to four or five. I don't care. Just give me a number. Three. Three. Okay. So that's Doctor Girlfriend. I don't even know who that is. From the Venture Brothers. No. We don't know who that is. We can't do something we don't know who it is. Give me another number. Uh, two. Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Okay. Okay, so Belle is looking for a date. I'm going to give four possibilities. The internet, you guys, you can say so-and-so because, and give me a, a, a sentence or two of why. I will pick good ones and give them to Eric, and Eric will pick based on your answers, not based on his own opinion. Okay. Sounds you have good. to like you have to let them persuade you. Okay, oh, so we'll yes, start yes. with her first date, date number one, Optimus Prime. Tractor trailer that turns into a giant robot. Kicks butt in the name of freedom and justice. Gotcha. Possible number two. <laughs> Earthworm Jim. A, snar <laughs> a snarky worm in a robotic suit. Um, number three, Commander Shepard. This is a, I guess he's from Mass Effect. A big wig aboard the starship SSV Normandy. Fights and romances all comers, human and alien, while saving the galaxy from annihilation. And number four, Frozone from The Incredibles. Ice blasting, smooth talking superhero. So you need to pick Optimus Prime, Earthworm Jim, Commander Shepard, or Frozone. Um, and tell me why. And it has to be a good one. I will not pick dumb ones. The, um, and I will read them to Eric. So we need to find hopefully one for everybody, but that might not work. So you won't pick dumb ones, but you were playing this game in the first place. Shut up. Uh, Optimus Prime, because Bell has a thing for guys who change forms. Frozone, because he's the greatest good she'll ever get. <laughs> <laughs> Earthworm Jim, because he is groovy and always saves the girl in distress. Okay. One person says, I'm with Eric. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Commander Shepard, because he's an actual human. Hmm. Frozone, so he can ice the rose and the beast doesn't die. Oh, good thought. <laughs> Earthworm Jim, because he can lend her the suit. Okay. Dude, I don't even remember. It's been a long time since I played Earthworm Jim. Yeah, there was the cartoon series too that was extremely goofy. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, I'm not seeing any more answers here, Eric. I think <laughs> <laughs> I think I broke the internet with this game. Or did well, I just I, stop getting responses? I right. I think oh wait. Okay. I think something might have jammed up here. No, no. Oh wait. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm not really... Oh, Optimus Prime is his own transportation. Because <laughs> you know Bell goes for the guy with the cool car. Have you watched the movie? The, the new one? Yeah, have you? It's a great movie. Yeah, it is. I don't, I don't think the Beast has a car. I... No. Yeah, that's, that, that's it. Go ahead. I think, I think I've got to go for the argument that, that Bell goes for guys who can change form. Um... That the Transformer is is the way to go. Optimus Prime is the winner. Um, I thought the Frozone freezing the rose was a good answer. And that is a very good idea. But but that would be using it, wouldn't it? So? <laughs> okay, fine. Yes. He gets did the you, number two. He used Gaston. Um, yeah, we're, we're uh, actually we're watching uh, Harry Potter. The whole series of it okay. with my kids. And um, the scene where... Hermione comes down the stairs for this, the ball, whatever they have, and, uh, and, and four. My kids are like, that's Belle. I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, she does look quite Belle-like at that point. She does not look like she aged much in the, the, the 15 <laughs> years between those. All right. So, all right. This is about pocket. This is about games. So now we're going to move on to some actual games. Eric is going to tell us about two he's recently played. Actually, he'll tell us about one, and then I'll talk about dragon pets from last week. Oh, hey, all right. Well, hey, let's begin. Heavy box. This is a heavier box than it looks like. Oh, I want to talk about this too. Untold Adventures Await. This is from um, the company that makes Rory Story Cubes, which 
used to be the creativity hub and now is called Hub Games. Anyway, uh, Untold Adventures Await is a storytelling, it's a storytelling game, pretty much, uh, that uses Rory Story Cubes to um, sort of power the action. You get these pads of paper that you're basically creating a series, like a TV series. Yeah. Um, so you, you have this description of what kind of show you're making, and then everybody's going to get these character profiles where you, you figure out what abilities you have, what your background is. Um, so you have sort of these brainstorming sessions uh, at the beginning. Uh, like I had... Uh, well, this, no, we, we had a series called Not My Job, and it was the pilot episode uh, in New Haven, Connecticut. And there were superheroes in this universe, none of oh, which are yeah. in New Haven. Our superheroes also showed up in our universe. They, they tend to. Um, so you have this, this board with basically five, you can't really see the indentations. There are indentations on this board. Uh, there are five different scenes. And you're going to plot in, I have to dig things, they're all the way in the bottom here. But, so this is say scene four. Da, 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 da. And it'll flip over when you get to it. And there's a space for one of the Rory story cubes. Glare. And you can, it comes with a set of basic Rory story cubes, but you can plug in whatever set you want. So if you've got um, the Scooby-Doo set or the Doctor Who set, you can have a Doctor Who or a Scooby-Doo adventure, which is pretty cool. So whenever you have one of these cards that flips up, you're going to roll the dice and plug the dice in uh, either literally literal definitions or some sort of uh, more abstract definition of what the threat is, what the setting is. Um, we're on a bridge in the middle of New Haven, and then there are these killer bees that are attacking. Um, and there are these colored lines that sort of connect the different spaces for, for the, the cubes. Um, and that sets, sets everything up. So now you've got your characters, you've got your setting, your situation. Then you've got these tokens, which represent actions and questions that you can ask. So you'll come up with, oh, I, I want to ask this question about this. And everybody, you roll the dice the remaining dice that you haven't already plugged in somewhere, and then pick one of those to give you your answer for what's going on. Or you say, I'm going to try and do something. I'm going to spend an action token and do something. And when you do that, you get an outcome. You got a deck of cards, and this pops up, and it's green, which means you succeeded, but... So then you pull a reaction card, but you get this little emoji. And... So that's a reaction either from your character or from another character that you're trying to interact with. This is very free form. And you work your way through these five scenes and you may succeed, you may fail, but no matter what happens, stuff has happened to your characters. And the idea is that you're now going to take these characters and do another episode of your TV show uh, with, with a different setup. This is, a, this is unlike anything I've ever done. Um, it, it, it's a very unique system. But it is very much a storytelling structure. It's almost not a game. Because while there are rules, there are structures for how you're, you're supposed to work your way through this stuff, there is not an ultimate win-loss condition. You're, you're not really fighting against the system. This is not a cooperative game in the sense of standard cooperative games. This is a storytelling game. And that can go either really well, and you can create these wonderful organic stories or if your group is you know maybe more hesitant or more lenient it can fall a little flat like if you're if your group is like i'm playing with my kids and they're willing to roll the dice and just go oh and now there are bees and not necessarily thinking through any like logical connections it just sort of you jump from thing to thing it 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 all is in how good your group is and we had fun. My kids are excited to play another round. And I think the real strength comes from continuing these characters into another adventure, seeing how they evolve. Um, it's a great activity uh, for, for playing, especially with kids or any sort of creative group that you want to hang out with. Um, but as a game, I don't, want to, I don't want you to go in thinking that this has the trappings of anything else that you may, may be playing. Um, this is its own beast, and it's a storytelling structure more than it is a game. But I still liked it. It's called Untold Adventures Awake. 
See, I liked it, and my kids loved it. I mean, mm. loved it. This is a game for kids, hands down. Mm. I, I mean, I, have a, I would have a hard time imagining playing this with adults. I, yeah, unless you were like in, using it as an improv. Okay, like, yeah, that's true. Like if you're sitting around, hey, let's do this activity. Right. A couple things. First of all, if you're going to get this, I highly recommend getting a couple extra sets of Rory Story Cube dice. They make like 10 different, I don't know, tons of versions. Yeah. And I felt like the ones that come with the game are too limiting especially when playing with kids because kids have a hard time taking an, uh, an icon on it and using it as anything other than what it is. Right. Yeah. So if it shows a soccer ball, I would be like, well, in a sports game or, you know, whatever, it could be anything there's, it's a soccer ball. Right. Now the imagination that the game has is wild. Like Eric says, you can do anything you want in a game and I like it, but there's so many, there's so much structure for what is essentially super free form. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, they, they it has give all you these rules that you don't need to follow. It's kind of right. odd. They give you a bunch of uh, of extra to player tokens for interrupting or making suggestions on another player's turn. But then there's very little structure about who takes turns when. So, you know, somebody can can lead the entire discussion and say, "Well, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this." And if no one jumps in and says, "Well, now my character wants to do something," they can just run away with the whole thing, spend all of the tokens for a particular scene. Um, you don't, we, we spent none of those interrupt tokens at all during our entire game. You had all I didn't these, even mention them for my kids. I just yeah. played, it's your turn to use a token. It's your turn. Does anyone here have a question? Because the questions didn't happen so often, but the, the, right. everyone wanted to take an action. Yes. Well, although the way the, the scenes are structured, the first scene has a couple of questions and several actions, but then one of the other scenes is all questions. So you have to use that particular. Story yeah, it's just kind of, you know, the kids have a hard time figuring out how that works. But uh, my character was super strong superhero whose butt was a computer. <laughs> yeah, I had a, um, a, a I was a, a beekeeper. And so I was trying to figure out why my bees were acting funny and trying to control all the fish in the universe, which is what eventually was going on. Yeah, so it's it's a really entertaining, interesting game, but it's more of an activity for a parent to play with their kids. I really feel that's what this is meant for. It's yes. it's a, it gives you some structure. They give you way more sheets of paper than you're probably ever going to use. Yeah. I didn't fill out half of that sheet. Yes. Well, again, it's it's meant to continue. What you like? It, it almost feels overwhelming to start a whole series with one of these adventures like what well, do what if i don't like where this is going i guess you can always start over they gave you plenty of paper yeah all right well that's an interesting game let's take a look at this one this was the winner of last episode dragon yes. pets now this one looks from the cover that it is a children's game it is not a children's game at all okay my full review of this will go up tomorrow um so you'll be able to watch the video review of that but essentially this is a game where you're trying to collect dragon pairs of male and female dragons so that you can get their eggs from them. So if you look here at the back of the box, you can see there's different dragons. For some reason, it was not focusing very well there, but let me see if the uh, single cards help. So here we go. I have a pair of dragons. If I get this pair of dragons, I will be able to breed them, and I'll get coins equal to the bigger number, which is four. How do I get these dragons? There's a grid of cards in the middle of the table, you will roll four dice. Each person on their side of the grid has these discs, gray, tan, orange, and purple, in front of one of the rows of them. And you're on one side of the grid. You will roll these dice that match those colors, and you'll set each die on that one. And that is where you can place one of your dudes to claim that dragon card. You also have a white die that is numbered from uh, two to four. And you can add or subtract that from one of these dice like if you roll a five or six, you can't, there's no five or six in the row, but you could subtract three from that to take the two. Or if I roll one, I could add the three to that to take the four. Needless to say, your options are somewhat limited, but whatever dice you use are out and the rest of the dice pass to the next person. So you have to think about which dice you're passing to them and which dragon they'll be able to put people on. But you also could have these coins. That's how you win the game, but you're also using these coins to re you can re-roll the dice in your turn and get all the dice back and re-roll them. Or you can claim all the dragons that people are on, yours and other people's. Or you can um, 
if there's empty spaces, you can fill them up. You need to have spaces filled up to get more stuff. It's fairly kinky, actually. Huh. I was really surprised. So I liked it, but I uh, it was not a kid's game. I'm surprised. Like I said, come back tomorrow for the full review. Also, tomorrow I will be shipping this to Eric. Yes. And at some point, Eric will uh, review the last one. We're going to give him a cue soon. One game every two weeks. That's what I do, folks. Only I, one game every two weeks. I, I will try. I uh, I did get Invisible Ink in the mail. And um, and then a few days later, I got a text with the rules. <laughs> that forgot to include in the box. All right. Well, give All us right. another game. Where'd the other game go? Here it is. This is called Rooster Rush. This is a very nice, shiny box um, from Mayday Games. This is a game from Antoine Boza and uh, Corentine Lebrat. Huh. It's, you know, a small box here. All right. Come on, open. Uh, in Rooster Rush, you have all of these cool little chips. There's, I want to say, five of them. Yeah. So they're poker chips, but they have vehicles on one side. This is a taxi cab. And then there's a generic crosswalk symbol on the other and each of these are different there's an old lady on a scooter and uh, an ambulance and stuff like that the object of the game is to score points by claiming these cards and you're going to get two or three of these cards laid out at any one one time so say it was a three-player game and we had these three cards there is on the back of them the taxi cab the police car and the old lady so each of the three players would take one of those three tokens and get ready because then we flip them over and now you've got a picture of different street elements and there are symbols some of those tokens are on each of the cards now you can earn points for these if you claim a card when it does not have any of those tokens on it how do those tokens get on it you ask well that's where those cool chips come in you ever played that game where you take a quarter and you put it on the table like this, and you flick it so it spins like this. Yes, that's and not a game, it, though. Well, it, it, activity. Okay. If you have you ever been bored and taken a quarter, so this is what you have to do. You say three, two, one, go, and everyone flicks their discs into the center, and so it should be all spinning over all of those cards in the center of the table. At any point after everyone has flicked their discs, you slam your hand down on one of the cards to say, I'm claiming this one. And if you're the first one to touch it, yes, that's the one you get. But if you've maybe trapped a token on there or a token eventually lands on that card, you're going to take that as a negative point. You get too many of those and you're out of the game. But if none of those tokens land face up on your card, you claim it as points. And you continue like this uh, until I think one player's out. I think that's how it goes. Or it's a certain number of rounds. The reason I don't know is because we couldn't play this game. I tried tr playing this with the children, and the dexterity aspect of this, the, the main mechanism of the game, was so difficult to even get to happen that we had to stop. Because if you've ever tried to flick accurately a poker chip into the center of the table, it's not easy. And... um. So we had discs just flying everywhere. And they say that if, if the disc goes outside of the play area, you have to reset. So we'd reset. And okay, here we go. Let's try again. Three, two, one, go. And they'd all fly everywhere. And then they just collide with each other. And it made it so like the whole idea is that you're supposed to have three or four spinning discs moving around the table, sort of hovering around like tops. And you're supposed to slam down. That's, that's how this game's <laughs> supposed to work. This game has horrible. But getting to that point is so hard especially with a six-year-old and a 10-year-old, like you have to play this on a gaming table that has walls because otherwise they just, what? I wanted to like this. It's, it's a novel gimmick. It, it sort of sounded cool, but just getting the game to the point where it was supposed to work, we couldn't do it. And, and so I had to, we had to call it. Uh, it's, if maybe you are better than I at making Rooster Rush work, and if you're good at spinning quarters, this might be the game for you. For us, we just couldn't make it work. It came with I several expansions, though. There's several expansions? Yeah, hang on. It, it came with like a bunch of little packs. Uh, so, yeah, there was, there was the Heavy Rain series. 
Uh, there's the Thick Mist series, the Traffic Jam series. And there's also a designer pack with the two designers. They get an additional, uh, an additional token with the two designers on either side. So, you know, there's plenty of expansions right there in the box. All right. Well, now it is time for our week, our bi-weekly game of Pick the Next Game. Tom reviews, and Eric will eventually promise to review at some point in the future. It's All right. So not the game like two days ago. No, you did not. My wife sent it out as soon as our last show was over. I got it like three days ago. I tracked it. Four. I have a camera inside it. I got the rules yesterday. <laughs> Even that's not true because I said I'm two days ago. So anyhow, um, what I do here is we have six games. Now, I might review more than these games. In fact, of the last batch, the, the first one I review will always be the one you pick. I might review a couple other ones. In fact, last time there was two I was really interested in, and I reviewed both of them. They're coming out this week. The one was with the gold nuggets. Remember that one? Yeah, yeah. That's a two out of ten. It is <laughs> horrific. And when I went to uh, look it up online, it has Stronghold's name on it. I hope he's not bringing this one to America. That game is so bad. And the doggy bone one, the doggy bag one, that one was decent. Decent. The best one was the one you all picked so far. So, good. Anyway, I'm grouping them by size. So, some weeks I'll do – last week I did medium games. Sometimes I'll do small games. But today we're doing big games. Right? So, oh, all boy. these games look interesting. This will be, I think, a harder cull, I think. But you guys always surprise me, and you are very wise. Are you ready? We're going to go through three rounds. In the first round, I'm going to uh, show you the front of the, the box, read it in the back. I'll read a little bit of the description, and then the audience will eliminate one of these games, and Eric will eliminate one. Then in the second round, I will open the games, and uh, we'll look at the pieces. You'll eliminate two more. And then finally, I'll go through the rule book and pretend that I know what I'm talking about, which I was not even close correctly on Dragon Pets, by the way. But hey. Okay, so here we go. Are you ready for big games? The first one is from Hook, and it's called Fewville. And I really need to learn to take this plastic off of these as I pull these up here. So while I'm taking the plastic off, it says the king of the country calls upon his subjects to give the town of Fewville a new shine. The help of all the citizens is required, and everyone does their share of the building work. The town mayor, the architect, the traveling entertainer, and the publican. Because, you know, the publican's always helpful. Um, the friendly fairy and grumpy gnome also join in, but beware of Dragomir the dragon. If he wakes up, he will attack the town and burn everything not protected by the rain clouds to a uh, cinder. So if you look at the back of the box, looks like a midweight Euro style game, you think? Hook makes yeah. a lot of good Euro games. This is kind of an interesting looking one. That seems like a good possibility, right? Next one is called Time Arena. It's a very bright, colorful cover. It looks pretty cool. Okay. And this one, start the timer and get ready for 10 minutes of fierce combat. Knock out your opponent's fighters. They can only return to the arena once their hourglass timer has run out. Destroy the enemy's totem before your five minutes is up. So if you look here, it has like a combat arena style with timers down it. Interesting. That's time arena. The next one. Oh, and that one's from Blam! Uh, the next one is from a company called MYBG, and this one is called, uh, this is really a really bad font on it, Voyager Venture. So you can see that the font there is bad, but this is a game from Japan, and in 1486, Columbus came to Spain to lobby people, and so your adventure is trying to fund a voyage. So the board on the back looks like you are in a court and you're trying to get people to fund a voyage to the new world. So that is Voyager's Venture. Third game. This was a very bright, beautiful game here. And it's from a company called Migros, I think. And it's one of those boxes that doesn't fit in. So hopefully that means once you punch everything out, it will. And it's... Held and tough. Are you ready to begin your quest for the monster teeth? Explore the beautiful upper world. Descend into the netherworld and seek your fortune in combat. Command the monsters together with your allies or turn against them. An interactive, multifaceted, and easy to learn adventure board game for kids and adults alike. 
As you can see, the artwork on this one looks very cute and fun. Looks like a little adventure game. I see some dice and stuff. And then there's always this intrigue of the box not closing. The next one is from uh, Eric, uh, if he was a grouchy old man. And this one's called Get Off My Land. So uh, Get Off My Land is a game of close quarter farming where farmers compete for limited space and resources. The game takes place over the course of one year in game time. Uh, as you expand your farm from a humble farmhouse and build it to generate enough money to proclaim yourself as the most successful farmer. So you can see there's kind of a grid here. It looks like you're in closing areas for farming purposes. This is from First Fish Game. Get off my land. That's Jebediah McGillicuddy on there. Oh, we haven't had him on the show in a long time. I actually thought he was dead. And the last one is the MS Batori. This is from Grana Games. And this one here, uh, it's another transatlantic journey um, aboard the ship here. The voyage from the Marine Station in Gidiana to New York attracted the usual high society. No one expected the transatlantic ship would stage scenes from best-selling crime stories. The theft of Countess Palika's jewels shocked both the passengers and crews, yet it was not among them that the thief's hiding. In this game, you're a detective trying to find from all these suspects who it is. It's like Clue on a three-dimensional ship. Ooh. I've pretty seen the three-dimensional ship. It's pretty cool. Okay, but these I hope... At least I thought when I randomly, semi-randomly pulled these off the shelf, they all have a possibility of looking pretty good, but they all could be bad. Bigger games always intrigue me more than smaller ones they just do. So what we're going to do right now, folks, is you can vote for one of these games to kick out. So you can kick out the MS Batori, Get Off My Land, Heldentoff, Voyages Venture, Time Arena and Fewville. All right, go ahead and vote. Uh. Let's see what people are saying. Eric, you better think of one too because they might pick the one you are thinking of. Exactly. I got my first and second choice. Well, it looks like it is actually two choices here are in neck and neck. Oh, it's close. It's close, but oh my. All right. Well, it looks like having a bad font gets you booted. Uh, Are you serious? Were you going to pick this one? Uh, I that, that was probably my first choice. But, um, it's gone! Yep. Right up behind it, though, I'm going to send away the real-time game. The, uh, the, time the time arena? Yeah, time arena. No, no. I don't think so. It looks cool. Yeah, you know, the ten minute timer thing, I don't I don't think I think that's gonna be too chaotic. I'm not no well, it's gone. Yeah. All right. So now we have four games left. All right, so here first we have held down tough. And I'm really curious because I need to oh, I'm glad you didn't pick this one because I needed to know why the box didn't close. <laughs> all right. Well that is a there lot. You go. Of, oh tiles are popping out all over the place. There are hexagon tiles. There are this is interesting. It shows tiles of a, a character sheet with like swords and hearts and teeth. Oh man, there's a ton of tiles in this game. All right, so there's that. Lots of tiles. Then we have a rule book, which is nice and long and thin. Oh, there's actually several rule books. Okay, it's actually not so thick though. I'm not gonna look at the rule book much though, because that's right. for the third round. Um we got some board here. This is like, I guess, to put monsters on. And then here is a, a cavern, I guess, that you go down into. Okay. And then a bunch of, of nice looking cards and some dice. And then a, a, a nice plastic insert, which it looks like everything goes inside, which is why the box did not close completely. So that is Helen Hoff. It looks interesting. Looks like an adventure style game for kids and adults. Get off my land. <laughs> I thought you'd kick that one out, Eric. But you have this soft spot for farms ever since Agricola. And look, it comes with a large it, pumpkin. There's a pumpkin? And a saw to keep track of the months. So, And he's already punched out, too. That's kind of cool. 
an Ooh. old timey two person saw. These are nice components. Look at that. I'm 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 I am surprised, folks. There's these and the and the meeples. You can see there's like white printing on them to show their farmers. This looks a lot better inside the box. And oh, this is not paper money. This is card money. And the tiles are already punched out and plastic wrapped. I don't think I've and they're already in the plastic insert. This is a new thing here. And oh, oh. I, I know that I'm fawning over this a little bit, but I was surprised because I thought this one would not look so good inside. This you can see there's like an insert to put tiles on and your market thing. That's pretty cool. And then there's cards, a big set of cards um, with uh, steroids. <laughs> <laughs> and then little cards that look like they go into your farm. There's vegetables and chickens, which you apparently are giving steroids to. So that's Get Off My Lawn, a box that has surprised me with the insides of it. Now we're at MS Batori. This is a ship game. These are all pretty good productions. And this one, ooh, I wish more companies would do this, where they have these cards and you just go. Slide them off. I love that. And so we have, I apparently just opened the pack of cards that's not English. So let's try that again. English cards. Here we have different people, the captain, the purser, the entertainment officer, the stewardess. I know it's her. Okay, right now I can tell you it's her. So they each have different characteristics. There's different locations. This kind of looks like Clue in some senses. Wow, that's a pretty thick rule book. Oh, that's because a lot of the rule book is showing you uh, how to put the ship together. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of uh, things there. But yeah, it's a three-dimensional ship, and this is uh, bigger than I had expected. Here's a sheet. This looks like, again, like Clue. I guess you're eliminating the suspects. And you each have a shield to keep track. And, ooh, look at that, man. You saw this in person, you said, right? I did. Yeah, I did too. And I regretted putting this one underneath the, uh, in the stuff shipped home. I just couldn't carry anything. But, oh, man, this looks great. All right. Well, oh, that honestly, so far of all three games I've opened up, they've all looked pretty great. I'm very excited about this. No matter which one gets picked, I'm going to be pleased. Well, I mean, unless the game sucks. <laughs> all right, finally, we have Fewville. Now, this is from Hook, so I know it's going to look good, probably. Their stuff tends to. So we have the board here with a big. Uh, dragon by the way that one of the things that we're doing here in the show is we're showing that you should judge things by their cover um so that's kind of what the board looks like and then oh man some nice like uh, grails and big pieces here wow there's some nice tiles look at these things clouds you probably get points for clouds and points for birds you know how that works in the euro game you get points for everything sure and points for man this stuff looks good I'm a, I love that games look so good these days. This makes me happy. This this makes this a very hard decision. I'm glad. Oh, but look at this. I didn't realize this. See all this nice stuff? Look on the other side. Dun, dun, dun. That's the dragon burning it down. That's pretty cool. So a lot of tiles in this game. And um, not, not much else. It's just mostly all those tiles. But there's just uh, some dice and, and some. Uh, these are for scoring, I'm sure. That's what's in it. Woo. This is a hard choice, folks. Now, I mean, uh, these all will probably get reviewed. You know, when I go through games, I, yeah, I don't know if that will ever get to the table. I don't think, I don't know that I'll review all of them, but I'm going to review one of them. But right now, you have to pick two that are off the list. There's one we're definitely going to review. So you can pick Hell Dentoff to kick out. That's the, the uh, treasure one. Get Off My Land. The MS Batori. Or Fewville. All right, those are your choices. And then Eric will pick another one to boot off. So what do we got here? Go ahead and vote. Let's see if the third place in the first one is still kicked out here. This is hard. It is a tough one because these all look pretty good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All four have been getting votes. All four getting votes. 
Oh, but this one is very clear. Surprisingly, the hook game, Fewville, is gone. Oh. Sorry, Eric. I know you like that one. Okay. All right. Then so get off my land, Heldentoff or MS Battery. MS Battery. Battery. Is it battery? I think I think it's battery. Um, say battery. I gotta I gotta I gotta get get off my land off the table. Ah, I'm just telling you, I'm probably gonna review that one at I, some point. I think you're gonna get all really four good. of these. I, you I think, think so? you're probably but but get off my land. I, I'm more interested in the other two. Okay. Well, I know why you're interested in the other two. Because there's two things you'd like, and that is playing games with your kids and deduction. Am I wrong? You are not wrong. That is exactly what I'm looking for. All right. So we'll take a look at this one first. All right. This is Heldontov. Comes with a poster. Why does this poster exist in the box, you may wonder? So they can put all the backers of the Kickstarter on it. Oh. All right. So anyway, I like, I like how this looks here. You can see that the characters here, it looks like you can put these swords there in these spots that increase how many swords they have. Um, but those are not the only things that can go in those spots, it looks like. And you can see here, it has kind of a cutesy artwork. This looks like a mushroom lady. And there's like mushrooms and fish and apples to put in those spots. Uh, a lot of those actually. Oh, and rings. See the rings here? And then there is quite a few tiles in this game and it looks like these are bad guy monster type things but this is definitely for kids because these are not like scary bad guys at all right yeah and then this one comes with boots and i'm going to guess that helps how far you move and then more tiles and more tiles and i've already shown the board all right let me do the vassal patent hit go through the rules and see what i can learn about the game okay so you're going to choose a hero so there's different heroes that you can be. Pick one now, Eric. Uh, the blue one in the upper right-hand corner. Oh, man, that's what I was going to pick. Sorry. That's Math Mathian, well-protected and always vigilant. All right, I'm going to pick the, the young lady riding a pig. Her speed is unmatched. All right. Um, so you're going to be setting up this game here, putting uh, monsters out. Each person's going to take it. On your action, you're going to actions on your turn. And... The, I was right. So you have these little foot things that shows how many actions you get per turn. Then the rings, how many potions you can brew. And then the sword is basically helping you fight. You can move, reject missions, or attack. You move around the board. You're going to pick up um, those uh, apples and fish and mushrooms to make potions. Apparently, those potions will do different effects. You will find these mission cards. Oh, that's right. There was that pack of cards. Each mission card is going to require different things, and it will give you rewards. That will be teeth. There's a picture of a mission card. And then you will roll a die to see what treasures you get. You are basically just trying to get a certain number of points from missions. So it's almost like a pickup and delivery. Oh, I shouldn't say that. That, that biases Eric. It's almost like a collect items, um, a set collection maybe, to then do things. And then you have portals that let you go into the nether worlds. And then there will be monsters moving around. And you can be, de be defeated. And if, you're defe if you are defeated in the underworld, you just go back to the upper world where you get one life point back and keep going. So it's not like there's player elimination. And then there's different things will happen based on where you go on the different spots. So it seems like a very light adventure style game. Is it cooperative or competitive? Oh, that's a good question. No, no, it's, it's competitive because it said the first person to get um, a certain number of victory points. So it looks, like it's, it looks like you're really not getting in each other's face at all. You're just all running around fighting monsters on your own. All right, then the MS Battery. So I've already showed you a lot of this game, and you can see here, again, that the different characters in the game all have uh, different uh, uh, characteristics. And then there are, like, clues, I guess, here, like the swimming pool and the dance in the social room. Those are events. And then there are different um Cards, it says a deck card. There are gender cards, location cards, roll cards, number cards. I don't know what any of that means, but I do like these kind of sheets where they show all the different suspects and you can cross them off, I guess, once you've eliminated them. And you've already seen the big ship and how you put that together. So the way this one works is on your turn, you're going to move 
some characters on the board. You can move any of the characters. They're going to all be on the board moving around. And after you're done moving, if you fulfill a condition on an event card, you get a question card. You can pick one of the question cards that's up there. Then you ask a question to someone else. It's a yes or no question. Uh, do you have any characters who are in a cabin? So you're moving people around on the ship and then asking people about those characters, trying to figure out the cards that they have in their hand. So it sounds almost like um, Sleuth, but with a board where you can see everything on it. And then you have an investigation sheet where you'll be marking down this information. And your goal to win the game is you say, I accuse, j'accuse, and you secretly make a check mark in a square above the character they think stole the, the pearls. And then you will look at the face down card, which was set aside. And if that's who it is, you win the game. If you're wrong, you can't, you lose, but you still answer questions from other people. So very similar to Clue in a lot of ways. Yeah. All right. Okay. So here's the rules of how the final round works. You guys are now going to vote for the one you want me to review and then Eric to review. The MS battery or Hell Dentovet and Hell Dental. If you're voting for the one you want, once we get to tally the results of that, Eric can choose to reject it. He cannot reject three in a row. However, last time he did not reject, so he has cleansed his palate. You know what? I'm going to say I'm going to go with the people on this one. I'm interested in either. They can choose my fate and yours as well. Tom, you look concerned. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just... Uh... Okay, sorry. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the votes here. Ooh, it's close. Okay, so remember, you're voting for the one you want me to review. Just to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, Eric, this is a landslide. Ooh. I am sorry to your love of deduction. But it is actually going to be Helden Toff. Helden is Toffer. the winner. No, there's, there's no an e N at the end. There's just an E. Helden Toff. Toff. It, it, it's like a uh sound at the end. It's, if it's oh, German. man. All right. Well, okay, fine. Well, it won. So Eric says he's <laughs> not going to reject that. So that is the game. I will review it, as always, next Thursday or two Thursdays from tomorrow. Because I'll talk about it the next uh, Dice Tower tonight. Right. And then it will the review will go up the next day. So that's how we do this. So like tomorrow you'll be able to see my review of Dragon Pets and go on. Well, there you go. Um, so again, Dice Tower tonight is always evolving and things. We're going to always be trying things. But for, for now, until I get bored of this game, we're going to try this one every time. It's also fun. Like, like I said, of the six games like last week that we opened, I, I, I played three or four of them. To one of them, I'm never. I'm not going to touch probably at all. Uh, but we at least opened them up and looked at all of them. So the ones here, I'm actually interested in all six of them. However, some of them are lower in the totem pole because of what we just did. Like Fewville is gone for a while, but I will be playing this one for sure. Um, yeah. <clears throat> maybe get off my lawn too. But hey, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I mean, Fewville looks interesting. I, I the, the concept of of putting the storm clouds in the way of the dragon that could be kind of cool. Who knows? Okay, so um, now we'll take a few questions from people. The boy, time went fast this time. So anyone have any questions for Eric or myself? Before we get into the questions, uh, we just announced that I'm going to be at Grand Con coming up in September. Uh, I'm excited to go back to Grand Rapids. I grew up in Kalamazoo, so it, it'll be kind of cool to head back to Southwest Michigan. I'm psyched. And we also have a new Facebook group. If you haven't joined that, go and join the Dice Tower group. Lots, of, I mean, a lot of discussion there for sure. And um, there's something else. Uh, oh, yeah, the cruise. We are, we are opening up cruise to the people who went last year. Um, and after a week or two of that, we'll be opening them up to everybody. So keep that in mind. Oh, so now people want to go to Grand Con. They're asking if they can get a game in with Eric at Grand Con. I'll give you the standard pat answer. We'll get to everybody. We don't schedule games. But if you're there and it happens, it happens. And if there's ever a chance for such a place or a thing to happen, it would be at Grand Con for sure. And uh, any any specific events, I'm sure we'll announce as soon as we know. Uh, let's see, Eric, did you finish putting the stickers on Meeple Circus? <laughs> Somebody saw my tweet today. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, I so my son comes up with the wrapped Meeple Circus that we got for Christmas, 
and says, Dad, I want to play this. And I said, well, first we have to play this Rooster Rush game and and spin the... Oh, that, that obviously went over um, well. <laughs> and, and so after that, <laughs> we opened up Evil Circus. And uh, and and so I'm, he's playing with all the pieces. He was like, oh, I'm going to make... And he just on his own started stacking things and putting the, the, the little planks together and putting the tiger on top. And he was having a blast. Meanwhile, I'm trying to rip the stickers off and you have to line them up just right because you don't want any of the sticker to lean over the side because that's going to mess up in a dexterity game you don't want it to you know tip the meeple over and uh and by the time i was like two-thirds of the way done with the stickers he looks at me and goes dad i don't want to do this anymore and he wanders off after he had built this lovely little city of Circus Meeple. Well, maybe once you play the game. I really Meeple Circus is a fun game. It is a blast. I think once my my wife loves it too. So when we can get her involved, I think we'll we'll make it a family activity. But yes, Did I finished you... the stickers. All right, next question. Did you guys ever get to real time strategy video games like StarCraft or Age of Empires? I played um Warcraft 2 a little bit um when when that was a thing uh but i never played it enough to to get really good at it or or compete a lot uh in i guess at that point it was it was lan um competitions there wasn't a lot of online competition and that sort of thing uh but but that was about as far as i went once starcraft hit starcraft 2 i i was no longer playing those types of games well we played in college we played warcraft briefly then warcraft 2 we really got into that where we would stretch lines across hallways from one room to another to play that. And we also played a lot of Dune, really like Dune. Um, they, they had a real-time strategy game. And then Command and Colors a little bit. And when I left college, I, I played the Star Wars one when that came out. But these kind of faded for me because most of the time my opportunity was to play people on the internet and they just beat you before you even move. <laughs> that my, 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 my fun of playing random people on the internet and video games is like zero. It really is. I don't, they just crush you. It's not fun. I, I don't, I don't get it, but playing friends, that's fun, but not against random people for me. Yeah. I still like that style of thing. I just haven't played any in a while. If I do, I just play the computer. Did you see the King's plunger component in rise of Queensdale? Did I see the what in Queensdale? All right. So you haven't. So Eric Martin from board game geek posted some pictures. Um, the Queensdale is the new legacy game. And it comes with a little plunger because the game will have multiple levels of tiles, I think. And they're like in there tight as part of the legacy thing. So you use a little plunger to pull the tiles out. Okay. That sounds you say good. that, but you like it. Uh, let's see. Uh, are you going to be doing an audio version of reading stuffed fables? <laughs> If uh, Plaid Hat wants me to do it, they know where to find me. <laughs> that would be a lot of reading, though. There it is would be, lot. but I have there read almost the entire thing. There than Mice and Mystics. There's, yeah, I, yeah. No, yeah there's a lot more. more. Yeah. Because in Mice and, 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 and Stuff Fables, you are reading all the time, while in Mice and Mystics, you basically are reading at certain points in the story. True. I think there's more chunks of text in Mice and Mystics, but I haven't looked at them side by side. You know, your picture behind you is opposite colors of Tom today. What? Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's true. You're wearing a green hat, right? Well, not really. It's bluish. It's the yeah, X-Men really. hat. Yeah. Right. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Yeah, it's a green shirt. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Yes. Oh, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I heard there were Dice Tower tote bags available for purchase. Well, there was Dice Tower bags in our um, Kickstarter. They were not they were like cloth bags you can carry games around. You can still get into the Kickstarter if you email me in a sense that when I send out the pledge manager, which is going to be soon, you can I can send one to you too if you still want to get stuff. Just email us at dicetower at gmail.com. Same thing if you want to be get information on the cruise. Um, I'm a hymn nerd. Tom's favorite hymn is... Uh, he lives. Uh, Tom, were the dinosaur replacements you found in a store cheaper than the ones on Amazon? They were. These little dinosaurs. I don't, did I show them to you last time, Eric? No. Ooh. I must have showed them on the Q&A. These are little dinosaurs that I got that are um, I'm going to replace 
the ones in um, Dinosaur Island. So okay. they're little rubbery type dinosaurs. And I got it from Amazon. They were pretty expensive. Like I got this little handful of them for like 10 bucks, um, which is not cheap. But I found them at Michael's for five bucks. I okay. only had three packs, but I bought them all. And I will go back and look for more in a few weeks. Cool. When are you going to paint stuff, Fables? For me, probably never. Uh, probably after I paint Mice and Mystics, which is probably never. You know what, though? I'm thinking I might do it because uh, one of the stretch goals was Vernon would teach me to paint. So maybe that would be the game I have him teach me to paint. That would be good. Probably more more uh, primary colors in painting stuffed animals. Yeah, you think it would be so? It wouldn't be so hard, right? I don't know. Yeah. We're also bigger models. Yes. Has Eric finished all the stories and stuff's fables? Yes. Yes, we've completed the whole thing. Do any of the Dice Tower members attend conventions on the West Coast? Well, we're going to MeepleCon, which is in Vegas, which is pretty close to the West Coast. Eric, are you an early bird or a night owl? Ooh. Uh, I'm more productive in the morning. Like, if I don't get an early start narrating, uh, I'm often having trouble getting into the swing of things. But if I'm able to have a productive morning, I get through a lot more in the morning than I do in the afternoon. Um, I think we and, I, I think we should move to the Mexico system, honestly, because <laughs> I'm very productive in the morning and I'm fairly productive at night. It's the afternoons that kill me. Yeah, yeah. We should just take a nap. I I sometimes do if I manage to finish the recording day before the bus comes. I'll I'll grab a twenty minute nap. Well, that's not long enough. That's they, that's what they say, actually. Like a, a 10 to 20 minute nap is what you need to get yourself energized. You get beyond that, and then you get groggy. And It's hard to do that, though, right? <laughs> yes. All right. Yeah. What? Okay, let's see. Um... Have you guys any thoughts on the Gang Night movie? Is that out yet? Uh, I've seen trailers for it. I mean, it... It looks I don't like think... games are kind of a subset. Like they're just there to get the, the movie started. Right. And and it's game night in the sense of let's all play charades and stuff. I, I don't think they're there to play Catan, right? That'd be great. Like, let's all play Dominion. But it's real. Now you're shuffled. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the premise of the film is is that they're all together for game night and and they're used to doing like over the top experiences when they get together. And so then this guy gets kidnapped. And they all think it's some elaborate mystery room or something. Ooh, how to host a murder. Let's go. Um, other than that, I don't know anything about the movie. Eric, your shirt looks very clean. Is this really just a Tide commercial? Ha! Ah, that was my favorite of the Super Bowl ads. That was a really nice campaign. Hands down, that was really, really well done. It I really like it. Liked was it was well done. I like the old Spice one was the best because they even got the theme song. It, really good stuff. Um, it, it reminded me of um, of the old Energizer Bunny ads. I mean, now we're really dating ourselves, but that used to be the same style of campaign where you'd think you were watching a particular style of ad, but it was actually an Energizer commercial. This, this was even quicker, though, rapid. Like, it gave you, you get this initial impression, oh, yeah, I know what this is. In fact, once, there was one ad that I, I specifically said, oh, it's this, and it was a tight ad. It was very well done. All right, folks. Well, that's it for Dice Tower tonight. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. Watch it again 65 times. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we'll be back in two weeks. Uh, of course, Eric and I do an audio podcast, and that will be coming out in uh, on Tuesday. So, yes. uh, And then Manny and Suzanne just released their podcast uh, yesterday, yesterday. Yep. which was slightly delayed because of editing problems. But we got it. We got it taken care of. And so we'll be recording. We're talking about our top 10 something. Monster games. That's right. Uh, so I think you still have time to vote on it if you want to. You can always vote on our top 10 list by going to Dicetower.com and going and voting. So there's a chance. And tomorrow morning, Sam, me, and Vernon are going to be playing Kingsburg Live. It has no miniatures, so I'm not sure how Vernon is going to be able to handle it. <laughs> and so anyway, we'll see you guys then. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassal. I'm Eric Summerer. And you've been watching the Dice Tower. Thanks for watching. Promotional consideration has been provided by game publishers in the form of review copies of games. 
Tom and I will see you in two weeks for another installment. Our show is sponsored by viewers like you. Thank you. Ice Tower Tonight is produced by Tom and me with assistance from Derek Porter and Rob Searing. Interstellar Spanish groceries provided by The Goya Project. Timothy Pinkham composed our theme, and hosting is provided by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games at great prices at CoolStuffInc.com. Give us your feedback on the Dice Tower Guild at Board Game Geek, on our new Facebook group, or Twitter, or by emailing us at Dicetower at gmail.com. And don't, for don't forget to visit the other shows in the Dice Tower Network. Find something new at Dicetowernetwork.com. Until next time, from all of us at the Dice Tower, have, have fun. fun. Gaming. Gaming. Do -do 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 -do. Well, now that we're done, you want to play some more Slash?